Hello, hello, y'all. Welcome to If We Do This Together. Um, we are coming at you from our old living room. Can One of our two living rooms. Because <laughs> we're in the process of moving. And so um, normally we will come on um, live like video, but right now we're just going to do audio because... Yeah, everything's a wreck yeah. right now. And y'all don't want to see us right now. Y'all just don't. is a wreck. <laughs> um, but also, I hope y'all can hear us because um, our mic is, we're having a little bit of problems with it. So we're just going to be yelling at y'all and hope that the computer catches us. <laughs> hey, where's the mic so I can just hover over the mic? I don't know. I don't know. Well, <laughs> hope you can hear us. So uh, we started a show already. And uh, let's see, we're having a, we might still be having some technical difficulties. We're going to find out right now. Um, yeah, half our, half our audio equipment is across town, so there's not a whole lot we can do if it is messing up. So Chrissy is currently working with our, I guess, uh, our network guy. <laughs> but anyway, as if this is working, I'll go ahead and just jump right into it. So... If if you wonder why, you know, it's, you know, it's, if we do this together, it's supposed to be about marriage and relationship issues and why it seems like the past few have been just kind of strange theological dis discussions. Uh, the, the reason that I'm starting off with that is because we can't do much together if we're not together. And I know one of the biggest problems in, in uh, families today is that the... The husband and the wife aren't together yet. The, we're not, you know, we're, we're separate. Um, the man has, has his room and the woman's doing her thing, which is fine. But there's no, there's no order. There's no, um, it's just chaos. And so the reason I'm kind of coming on here and trying to speak about how the Bible talks about uh, how a husband should be is because it's hard to be together if, if you're just if you're unequally yoked, so that's that's kind of why I come in on coming on here these these first few episodes to discuss uh, esoteric things, I guess. And uh, so anyway, what was what were we uh, recapping? I guess last week we discussed more about fear yes. and identifying fear, and you know the purpose of that of of learning what you're afraid of. It, it's it's because you. The whole point is to is to to wake up. Basically, it's you, you can't be a good husband, much less a, without being a good man, and you can't be a good man without uh, knowing who you are, without knowing thyself. You know, as God says to do, to know thyself. And so these these first episodes are going to be kind of about how to go about doing that, how to go about um, you know finding who you really are, because most of us we're, we're not ourselves. We're we're a representation of, you know, 50 different demons that have control of us mixed with, um, you know, the, the image of our parents, you know, who are, how we're taught to be, uh, image of our friends, people who've influenced us. And most of us have never even met ourselves. And so that's why in order to become a man, you have to know who you are because you, you have to know what to stand up for. You have to know what to not stand up for, uh, just all kinds of stuff. So that, that's what the purpose of these uh, especially now, you know, it's, it feels like everybody has this sense of urgency, like we're running out of time and we may be. And so that's, you know, it's now or never. And even if this all kind of goes back to normal, which, you know, everybody's kind of seeing there's, you know, nobody has any idea how it's going to go back to normal, whatever normal is. Uh, time is short. And so, yeah, the purpose of this is to, and like I mentioned, uh, last episode, if, if you're, it's most likely women listening to this. That's fine. And, you know, odds are, I'd say, you know, half the, half the married women I know of, they're the head of the household. And it's, I mean, they've kind of grown accustomed to that, but they deep down know that it shouldn't be that way. And what they really wish they had was a, was a strong, competent, God-fearing man. And, you know, maybe tall, dark, and handsome, whatever. <laughs> that don't mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but a good God-fearing man. And I think men, if they had any idea what that felt like, they would be going for that too. Uh, the problem is they don't. We're, we're sedated. And I've been sedated. 
and the the world sedates you and it, it gives you these snares you know like like little rabbit traps that you fall into and all of a sudden you're addicted to something that you know you shouldn't be addicted to you're spending hours doing things you know you shouldn't be doing and so again that's the whole purpose of me kind of coming on and doing these these uh these what's it i guess introductory episodes yeah is to uh, if not help men directly who I, if they don't you know listen and kind of hopefully get inspired to just to to come with me that I need you you know other men need you your brothers need you uh, that hopefully at least the women you know we can maybe help you guys how to wake your man up because odds are he's in another room playing a game or if he works all day that's awesome that's what men are supposed to do and uh, but when he comes home is you know what is his mind on what's his mind on throughout the day I mean do you have any idea? You know, do you have any idea, uh, basically, what your husband worships? And so that's why last episode uh, we left off with the the subject. I'm going to try to uh, have you think about is, you know, what idols, what idols, and what pagan gods are we most likely uh, devoting ourselves to? So, Bab, now that you're drinking, I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> Coffee. I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> sure. Irish coffee. <laughs> Although with this move, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so I was going to ask what, you don't have to get personal if you don't want to or anything, okay. but what are just some examples of common pagan gods that we see people worshiping? Um, well, just in general, um, kind of just off of what I see um, in other people and myself. And I will and I will get a little personal because, I mean, my husband and I both know um, that I've recently come to something that I was worshiping. Um, but, you know, I, people put success um, mm -hmm. above God. They seek first the kingdom <clears throat> of success, the kingdom of money, the kingdom of even finding a spouse, um, the kingdom of, you know, video games, like you were saying. Um, I mean, I'm going to be, get real, real here. Even really? the kingdom of COVID-19, the kingdom of fear, yeah. a lot of people are worshiping and you don't realize it because you're af so afraid of it. You don't realize in a sense you're worshiping it because you're putting all of your thoughts, all of your, um, how you're reacting, what you're doing your into money. that. In your Every mind. Every ounce of your being is now devoted to this disease. Yeah. Then you're worshiping it. Even if it's like a tyrannical God that's controlling you, well, you're still devoting your life to it. Yeah. Yeah. And that fear, you know, that, yeah. that yeah. fear, a lot of us, I mean, I've been through that for sure, where it was the kingdom, I was seeking first the kingdom of fear and I didn't realize it because, oh, who's going to seek fear, right? Who's seeking yeah. fear? But when that's all we're focused on, we're seeking first the kingdom of fear. Yes. And we all know, uh, well, all us Christians know, seek first the kingdom of God. Yes. It's first. It's not second. There, there's no, there's not like an emergency and you have to bump it down. And once the emergency is over, we'll go back to seeking the kingdom. It's seek first the kingdom and everything, and God will protect you. Or, or if he doesn't physically protect you in the moment, he'll... He'll protect your soul. He'll make it to where you can you could be in a hospital bed now, uh, with perfect peace mm -hmm. and no fear. And that's that's you know I'm gonna that there's a a story of a, a young family that we've recently yeah. heard about. Yeah. Uh, husband's name was Josh. I don't know the names of uh, the rest of the family, but he's he seems like he's late thirties. You know they're they're a young family. They have I think six kids. Yeah, I think it was six kids. And uh, one, one infant, I think, I think three month old, and um, you know he the the husband, he was a good godly man. He he seek first the kingdom, and so all these trials coming these days, uh, no matter what it is, that they, they, he's able to handle it, put it in perspective, and stay strong with his faith. Uh, his wife, on the other hand, even though she was a believer, she uh, she had a very hard time uh, letting go of the panic and stress. You know, she'd watch the news, 
and it doesn't matter what channel, it's just terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. And so she, uh, one night, you know, she couldn't get over it. He'd, he'd pray with her and pray with her and he'd, he'd calm her down in the moment and then they tried to go to sleep, but she would, she kept waking up at, you know, every two hours or so. And, you know, the, the next morning came and the, the husband, you know, he, he kind of snuck out of bed to go to the store, get some coffee and didn't realize, you know, as he was trying not to wake up his wife, that she was already gone, that she had died in her sleep from stress. She had a heart attack. And those times she was waking up in the middle of the night with panic attacks were, they were just kind of a prelude to, to the next morning. Yeah. And it was building up. And yeah. this, I mean, as a woman, if you're listening to this, what broke my heart was uh, they had the crib next to their bed. And so, you know, through the night, it was the baby would cry or, you know, wake up. She would rock the baby. And he found her with her her cold blue hand rocking the baby. You know, it was, it was, it was on the crib. She had died and had a heart attack in the middle of rocking her baby. Yeah, so in the end, what killed her wasn't a virus. It wasn't regime change. It wasn't famine. It wasn't, you know, pestilence. You know, all the, all the stuff that we see coming if you're a Christian. You know, all these horsemen and bulls being poured out. Uh, it wasn't that that killed her. It was, she was basically a direct victim of Satan himself. Yeah. Because Satan works on our minds. And every thought we have uh, is a lie. It has to be because we don't we don't know the future. We're not we're not you know perfect psychics. So every thought you have of the future is just by definition a lie. Yeah. You don't we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, and we're you know we're kind of realizing this more and more because every day you turn on the TV and something's different. You know, some instruction is different. Do we wear masks or not? It, can we go to the store or not? And it's don't listen to your thoughts because they're lies. And even regarding the past, you know, a lot of people are stuck in the past. Yeah. Well, the, the, it's gone. You know, there's nothing we could do about it. It's, it's dead. All we have is the present. And, you know, God is in the present. To live in the present is to walk with God. And that's so hard to do. You know, we, we say it, it sounds nice and poetic. But to actually do it is, it, what I realize is that it's so simple that it's, it's almost impossible. It's that simple. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can't, you can't think it or feel it. You know it. You know, uh, me and Chrissy have talked about um, something that was real interesting. I noticed because we collect VHS tapes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, because they're uh, they're they're super cheap. You know, twenty five cents, and it's like it's hunting. It's like Easter egg hunting. Yeah. And. It's, you know, the nostalgia, which you don't want to get caught up in nostalgia, but it's just, it's sometimes it's better. You know, you don't see the, the CGI lines when it's a VHS tape. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just more immersive. There's noises and moving parts. And it's, Especially know, on the it. old movies we've got, like, and I love Anne of Green Gables, and I love that we have it on VHS. Oh. <laughs> it's like, go on. Um, yeah, there's something fun about it. But we noticed, especially, you know, through late 80s and 90s, just uh, something about the dialogue that I started to pick up on. Because this was kind of recently that we, you know, the past year or so that we started collecting these, uh, yeah. these movies. Yeah. And something that kind of blows my mind, you know, if, if you watch TV, you know, if you watch anything made today... When people speak to each other, they, you know, and they're having dialogue, they'll say things like, you know, I feel like you just don't blah, 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 or I feel like this or that, or I feel like we're going this the wrong way, you know, or I feel, I feel, I feel. And that's how everybody talks. You know, they, you know, just one-on-one -on -one now, they all, they all talk that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like you don't listen to me, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Or, well, and that sounds normal, you know, we're kind of used to that. But watching these movies from 20 years ago or so, there was a shift in the way we spoke and people used to say, I think, mm -hmm. you know, all those same phrases I used, it wasn't, I feel it was, I think, and I'm not exactly sure how or when, but for some reason, 
our mode of operation went from uh, brain to heart. It went from th intellect to emotion, basically. And a lot of people think that's a good thing. You know, uh, what are these phrases? Like, uh, if you're not angry, you're not paying attention, right? That's one of those yeah. social justice-y phrases you hear. Or, if you are if if you didn't care you wouldn't hold that grudge and so that like is a lie to people that makes people think oh well i can hold a grudge because that means i care yeah they they feel like if they're angry then they're doing something right and that's such a huge blatant obvious lie yeah I, yeah not to interrupt you but you know even with perfect example when Darren and i first got married like that first year like I mean, we still don't, we still don't fight, but, um, the first year we literally didn't fight at all. Like we, yeah. we just got, we only yeah. physically, not verbally <laughs> we, we beat each other. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> no, no. Um, but we, you know, we, we just literally did not fight. And I remember looking at him once because I had friends who had just recently gotten married or we knew of couples who had only been married a couple of years and were already going through divorce. And we would look at each other and I, I remember asking, are we doing this married thing wrong? Because yeah. we don't fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's so sad that the world had conditioned my brain to think, you're only really doing marriage right if you're fighting yeah. or well, bickering or I'm only a good wife if I'm nagging because that's the norm. Well, even uh, even psychologists these days say that that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. That it's it's abnormal to, to not be at each other's throats. But what they don't get is there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, contending with ideas. You know, I mean, we, we discuss things, mm -hmm. but it's just different when, you know, we... When we got together, it most likely was an overcorrection from our past relationships. We both had, you know, just horrendous relationships. And we yeah. both knew, you know, thank God we were we were raised with some sort of biblical grounding. Thank you, moms yeah, and grandmas really. and <laughs> moms, dads, and grandma. great tias and <laughs> Yeah, just, just I mean, you know, just to have that wisdom, you know, it's it's written on our hearts now. It's we don't if we don't memorize the Bible, we don't need to. We we it's in us. You know, yeah. There's a knowing about it. It's not a thinking or a feeling. And that's kind of what I was going to get to. But Well, okay, so I'll go back to that later. But so first, okay. so <laughs> talking about the fighting with each other. Uh, the reason it seemed it was so rare that we ever really got in any sort of, you know, con confrontation was because we already had an anchor, you know, even if it even if it wasn't as pinpointed as we've gotten to now through mm -hmm. prayer and study and, you know, prayer and study and prayer and prayer and prayer. Um, at the time, we still knew what was right and wrong. And we knew that right was God's way and wrong was the world's way. And that doesn't mean that back in the day when everybody was using intellect language, you know, it was all, I think this, think that, think that. Well, again, all, all those, your thoughts are lies. You don't know. We don't know. We don't, we, we don't have enough knowledge to walk. You know, we trip on things. That's how dumb we are. We don't have enough knowledge to do anything right. Uh, it's, you know, we be still and know God and to have the thoughts of God. You know, all these scriptures peppered throughout to let God guide. And we all think we're doing that, but we're not. You know, we, we, we think that if we go to a church or if we think about our Bible all day or if, try to feel the truth, it's... You have to know it. God, God doesn't mm -hmm. talk to you in your thoughts. It's not words. It's not feelings. It's a knowing. He reveals. And um, so, yeah, anyway, that was a little off topic. Uh, no, just, I love that. Yeah, thinking about mm -hmm. just, uh, I kind of forgot how we got on that topic. We were talking about. Think, oh, be it just know, takes. Yeah, and media, the media these days. Yeah. And how, how everything's misleading us. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and especially. You know, I mean, how do you, it's like any anything you think about, you can only reference it through a movie you watched. You know, any anything historical, uh, anything biblical, really, it's like you don't think of it off of your research. You think of it off of some sort of movie or TV show you watched, and that's the image that comes into your mind. Mm -hmm. And that's clearly a lie. We have to know that, as Christians, that we're being lied to nonstop. 
And if you're in your head, remember, you know, take every thought captive. That's that, you know, the Bible says, take every thought captive. And, you know, why is that? <laughs> you know, why take every thought captive? It's because they're not from you. you. Like, again, you've probably never met you. Yeah. You're stuck. You're stuck in this, this, you, you basically recreated in the image of the world. We're born in the, as you know, created the image of God. And then as we're taught, as we're molded, it's not by God, it's by the world. You know, and our parents too. They, I mean, but they, they don't know. They don't, they're just following what they were taught to do too. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, being born in sin, that's what that is. You're born into sin, not of sin. You know, a newborn baby has not yet sinned until he's taught to sin, until he's recreated. He's almost reborn into this earth as an mm-hmm. earth being, you know, but that's not how we're supposed to be. And so um, I guess that's a, I'm going to start kind of diving into you know, going back to, oh, that's right. We were talking about, uh, you know, idols and oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and things that have been, you know, an idol to you or yeah, an idol to me. I know well, one thing to keep in mind. Well, so first let me say when Paul went to, uh, he went to Athens. Well, he was in Greece, right? And he's doing his missionary work and he goes to Greece and, you know, Paul was a Jew. So he believed in one God, one creator of one source of being. And then he goes to Greece and he notices there were there were statues for gods everywhere. They were everywhere. There were gods for everything. There were there were gods for gods for gods. And then there were there were idols for gods who met another god and either made a new god. And there's just idols everywhere. To the point where they even had a they had a a statue and it was blank, and the the inscription said to an unknown god. <laughs> Wow. That's how misguided they were. And so, of course, you know, we know Paul t- tells them, you know, in reasoning with them, he tells them that what essentially when you have a, an unknown God that you worship, you're worshiping ignorance. That's how, that's how far the, the, well, we're just, we're back there again. We're doing that all over again. And it'll manifest itself much like those, those, you know, carved images they're a physical manifestation of the spiritual. It's kind of like a heaven meets earth situation and something's created out of it. Well, I know when I was, you know, for, it was about a year. It wasn't really that long, but I got, I was really addicted to video games. Like I, it was all I could think about. And, you know, they're, they're manufactured that way. There's, there's like top scientists working or psychologists working on how to ensnare men with these games. And you can't stop. It's like a drug. You're, you're at work and you're itching to play that game and you get home and you, and it's just an endorphin dump the whole time. You know, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is when I was like that, because I'm, you know, almost against my will worshiping this idol, the, the surroundings changed. And before I knew it, I basically had an altar to the thing. You know, the, the TV is moved around. The lighting's changed. I, I had it set up to where, you know, I have these Wi-Fi connected light bulbs where the, the lighting would change based on the video game I'm playing. You know, it's like these things <laughs> manifest themselves. I'm laughing because I had no idea that's why we had those light bulbs. <laughs> well, that was after I bought the light bulbs. But, oh, okay. <laughs> but that's my point. It's like you'll eventually recreate your surroundings out of whatever's there to the God you worship. And... You know, when when they were in Bible times, when it was basically the God of the Bible, Yahweh, Jehovah God, the source of being, versus their gods, versus Baal, versus Moloch, versus Ishtar. You know, Ishtar was Ishtar and Moloch were two of the most prominent pagan gods, and one was basically a god of war and child sacrifice, Moloch, and Ishtar was the god of goddess of fertility. And it makes sense. If if you're addicted to these things, if if you notice that for some reason that's what gives you life is well birth and fertility, it kind of makes sense why people would fall into those traps. It makes sense why nations would fall into those traps. Especially after a war. You'd go through a war. Well, what brings you back? It's the war brought everybody together, and then the fertility revived the community so it makes sense that people would start worshiping these false gods and that's what why this was kind of the subject today it's that 
there's most likely something. It could be food. It could be comfort. I mean, comfort's a big one. How often do we rearrange our entire household for everything to be soft and pleasant and we get lazy boys and everything's just built so that we feel like we're on a cloud all day? And all your future purchases, everything you're saving up for, it's like it's it's luxury comfort. It's mm -hmm. It's hedonistic. And there's many hedonistic pagan gods out there. So... Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to have people meditate on and to pray about and to get to know themselves, because that's what this is all about, yeah. is to get to know yourself. Uh, for the men, you can't be a good man. You definitely can't be a man of God until you know yourself. And part of that is confronting uh, what you worship. And yeah. same for women. So Yeah, same yeah, for women. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, so if... If women are watching this, it's more than likely because you watched um, the Herschel Purpose show, which we'll start going back to every other week with that. Um, but for now, you know, we're doing if we do this together, um, just to kind of, you know, if we do this together, let's do this together and get through um, this pandemic. Uh, but uh, so chances are, if you're watching this on SB SIBN, which is the network we're associated with, it's because you have experienced pregnancy loss or going through infertility um, and or going through infertility. And something that I just recently came to terms with was that I was seeking first the kingdom of pregnancy. Uh, and I had to confess that. I had to confess that to my husband. And more than, more than <clears throat> anything, I had to confess that to Jehovah and say... I am so sorry. I repent of this sin of it's putting, idol yeah, idol worship, putting, I mean, and literally everything was being revolved around what I'm eating for fertility. Mm -hmm. I was getting up, taking my temperature. I mean, if you're a woman listening to this and have gone through the fertility journey, you know what it all entails. It entails, you know, apps and tests and um, temperature checks and, you know, just all kinds of things and making sure you're eating and drinking the right things. And, um, and, you know, I had to finally realize and, and, you know, Darren and I talked about it and, um, you know, it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm putting pregnancy, I'm seeking first that. And I had stopped seeking first the kingdom of God. And so I had to, to repent, I had to forgive myself for doing that. I had to ask my husband for forgiveness. I, <laughs> I had to um, repent to God and, um, and, and put things back into place, which is seeking first the kingdom of God and, and all things will, I don't know the rest of the scripture. Yeah, well, all things will, <laughs> will put them place, put themselves in order. Yeah. That, that's the thing. It's when you, you know, it's like a, a tangled kind of, it's all one string, but it's tangled into a ball, like a ball of yarn, and you don't know where the end is. You can't unravel it until you find that one end, and then you can start working it all out. And that's your anchor point. That's, you know, seeking first the kingdom. It's, well, you know, even, you know, in this, in this whole mess that's going on, we're all asking, what do I buy? Uh, where do I go? What do I do? Do I pull all my cash out? Do I deposit all my cash? Do I buy gold? Do I... Uh, do we dig a hole? You know? Do we get a bunker? <laughs> How do I wipe myself? You know, uh, just all these, all these yeah. things. And the first question should be to God, you know, what, do, what God, what do I do for you? Mm -hmm. And it, especially with Christians, like we know we, you know, all these, you know, if most Christians have the thoughts gone through your head, is this Armageddon? Well, maybe <laughs> it definitely could be for all we know. The timing feels right. It's global enough. But it doesn't even matter. It's, you know, the, the what revelation about, the, you know, the tribulation and the process leading up to tribulation, that's that's a pattern. That That's how it happens. If normally it's all contained within one kingdom and this has happened before, you know, this has happened. It's just been more localized. It's been smaller. And if one nation falls, it's the same pattern. It's the, the pattern that revelation talks about, the four horsemen. And they go through it. You get pestilence, you get war, you get uh, price gouging or inflation, uh, and then you get, you know, starvation. It's just, 
and then the end comes. That's how it said. That's just the pattern. And so a lot of us as Christians, we kind of see these things. It's it, there's some bells ringing that feel familiar. You know, it's like we know this. I feel like I've read about what's happening. Yeah, yeah. And this isn't to cast fear. This is just this is no. what you read about. If you're a Christian, you've read it in Revelation and other books. Right. And the point is that it doesn't matter if it's real or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if in a week, not only will things go back to normal, they'll be better than ever. And, you know, me and Chrissy were talking the other day about and in so many ways that if things went back to normal within a week, that would be a bigger test for Christians than if it didn't. Mm -hmm. And how many people that are, they're panicking and they're afraid and they're, they're looking for God now only to, to be less, to, to let it all go if things go back to normal. It's like, that's, you're only praying for things to get better so that you don't have to be this way anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Because you truly worship the kingdom of comfort. Right. You, you, you don't want to see this world pass away. You, you, we're kind of in love with hell. You know, it feels like that sometimes. We're in love with, with money. It's like m money is a man-made thing. We know that. You know, whose picture is on it, as Jesus would say? It's not God. It's not, not, God is not on our money. You know, if, if everything changed, it's all worldly things. If you got sick and died, the, the greater fear should not be of those things. It should be, and I've told Chrissy, one of my biggest fears for myself, and this is, you know, admitting to the world, uh, probably because it's fairly common for, for believers is my, one of my biggest fears is that, is if I don't stay strong to the end, mm -hmm. you know, that's it. I, I don't, I'm not afraid of any sort of disease. I'm not afraid of, you know, war. I mean, obviously those are horrible things, but what I'm afraid of, oh, it's, oh we may have to, the mailman's here. Dogs are about to go crazy. Yeah. Excuse our dogs. This is real life and we are in a home studio. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm afraid of my dogs getting real loud. That's for sure. They will probably bark. The UPS person is here. Uh, anywho. Uh, my point is to, again, go, going back to know your fears, know, know what you're worshiping so that you can wake up. And again, if there's you know a lot of women listening, if you're here and you're seeking first the kingdom, that's all you need to do. That It'll take time. And if you're honest with it, God will guide you. It doesn't matter how, how late the hour seems. You know, it could be a day before the end. If you're honest about it and you're not just doing it out of fear of losing the earth. If you're, if you have fear of losing God's favor, if, if you have fear of disappointing, <laughs> if you have fear of disappointing your creator, then that's all you need to do. And it'll take time and stillness and prayer and get to know yourself. Find out all these things about you so that God can pick it up and carry it for you. And, you know, me... Me and Chrissy are, we're probably, you know, we, we knew that we both loved God with all our heart, soul, and mind, but we were still a little misguided. And the second this thing started going on, we were snapped back into our prayer life, which had kind of started to go by the wayside. We kind of started diving too much into our businesses, uh, into finding a house and all the, you know, all these earthly things, which is Getting fine. Getting pregnant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, all these things that if... If God wants them for you, he'll give them to you. You know, I mean, obviously, obviously God will give you what he knows you need. But what God gives you, the, the gifts are so much better than the things you think you want. And we, we've noticed that. We've discovered that. We've been disciplined by that. And it seems hard while you go through it. But by the time you're out, you know that it, it, it's this joy. It's not happiness. Remember, that's just an emotion that can control you in the moment. It's this joy that doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a different feeling. So, yeah, that's a, kind of that for this. Yeah, and, you know, just put your trust in God. Put your, put your trust in Him. Um, forgive who you need to forgive. Do you need to forgive your parents? Do you need to forgive a sibling? Um, do you need to forgive an old friend? I mean, who, forgive who you need to forgive. Repent and then surrender. Surrender to God. Surrender those idols to Him, you know, and, and you repent and surrender, you know, and, and it's hard. I, you know, 
Darren Darren can testify to this, but I cried um, when I realized I had been seeking first the king, kingdom of God because I was like yearning out to him. I was just, um, you know, it, it was almost like grieving, you know, and realizing what, what I needed to do. And it, sometimes it's hard to let go of those idols. We're not at, at all saying it's easy. Um, it's hard because sometimes it, you, it feels innocent enough. You know, it, it's not wrong of me to want a family with my husband. It's not wrong of us to want to raise a child up to love the Lord. It's not wrong to want money. Yeah. To want a nice house. It's not wrong to want any of that. No. It's wrong to put it above seeking the exactly. kingdom. Exactly. And so sometimes it's hard to realize what you've been doing. Yeah. I've noticed what, what's real interesting is it seems like everybody's biggest fear is that they'll end up without a home without clothing, uh, without possessions, without money. Essentially, their biggest fear is to end up like Jesus. And that that's telling, you know, because, again, we're made, we're recreated after birth into the image of the world. And so, you know, we all know these phrases, you have to die to yourself, you have to be reborn. Well, that's that's real. You have to let this new, this recreated you that's of the world die. Because that is a person. It's got a personality. It's got wants, uh, what it thinks are needs, uh, feelings, emotions. That's not you. That's not you. That's not the real you. The real you is the one that watches all that and judges you and you try to silence all the time. That's the real you. You got to start listening to that person. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, we all have this compass and we need to, it points north, we got to walk that way. And, uh, don't listen to your, again, don't listen to your thoughts. They're all lies. Take them all captive. Let God reveal to you the path and, uh, or the way, you know, I was, I was, you know, I've been reading Acts and it's interesting because this is before they had the Bible. Uh, this is before they had churches. It was just gatherings, you know, um, that's kind of what church means, congregation. They would congregate and there was nothing to read. You know, there was no, there was no Bible to read. There was nothing there. It was just it was people who had seen what happened to Christ or, or had listened to people who had witnessed Christ. And it was the way, it was a whole way of life, which we have a hard time imagining because it's like, oh yeah, that means read the Bible. Read the Bible every day. Well, yes, but, but also no. <laughs> uh, the way, and that's, that's how the world referred to it. Mm -hmm. the, the world referred to Christians. Before they were even called Christians, they were called the way, those of the way, because it's it's a path you walk. It's a whole different way of being. You're reborn. You're no longer yours. You're returned to the Father, which is kind of an image of how Adam and Eve were created that has been lost. So yeah, the, the whole point is to rebirth. Uh, let yourself die to the world. Let that earth, you know, all your fashion, everything that you love, that you are so afraid of losing with this world change, let it die. It's going to be painful, but let it die. Return to your father. Mm -hmm. And you'll have so much peace and joy. I can't even describe it. It's, it's, you can't put it into words. You, you just can't. It's this anyway. So I think next week I'll probably dive more into, again, it's, it's, you know, it's mostly women, you know, what, what can you do? You know, what can you do? And I'm going to get into Mary and, you know, the immaculate heart, as the Catholics say, mm -hmm. what does that mean? You know, what, yeah. what's, what is a woman's role? If she's not the head, well, what does that mean? She's just supposed to be a slave. Well, we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it awakens something in, in women that they know to be there Yeah. and that they've, that the, they've listened, that they've let the world recreate in its image and, and yeah, we're going to save the world. So that's the idea. All right. Talk to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Share this with your husbands, ladies. Share it on your page. Um, you know, just let's do this together. Um, we, you know, we just, Darren and I have a heart to bring people back to their father and trust God right now. Um, real quick, I know we need to sign off soon, but real quick, I, know I want to share a quick story of when we were living in Vancouver. Um, we were not prepared for the cost of living to be so much more than here um, 
in West Texas where we are. And, you know, I wasn't working. Darren was the only one working. And, I mean, it happened like three times. I specifically remember an electric bill that we need to pay. It actually yeah. may have even happened more than three times. But it seemed like every time we needed what a bill paid that we were about to get cut off or something because we were struggling it mm -hmm. never failed. We got a <laughs> refund in the mail. A literal check in the mail yeah. over and over. To the right exact way. penny. Yeah, th there were, there were. <laughs> maybe we'll do a, an, ep an episode on miracles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's, from what we've seen and things that have happened, that's, that's, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. all real. That's all I'll say is it, it's all real. Uh, and another thing to keep in mind is that, that, that means that, Evil is real too. Yes. And it, it'll come and it'll sound like God. You'll think it's him. You'll think it's right. Don't listen to it. God, God reveals. He doesn't talk. He doesn't make you feel. He reveals. You will know. You will know. It's not a It's not a guess. If you're mm -hmm. unsure, then it's not God. Yep. It's that simple. Yeah. And later on, like, yeah, we... Yeah, we'll have to do a miracle episode. Yeah, yeah. Later on, we'll we'll discuss more, even just about a revealing God recently had to, for me, but that's like way down the road. Um, um, but yeah, like just it's real. It's all real, y'all. Um, but like my husband said, just like the miracles and the goodness of God is real, um, so is the realness of the enemy. And he is out to still kill and destroy. Yeah, don't underestimate him. Yeah, and we have to be vigilant, especially right now in these times, y'all. A lot of y'all are home with your children. Um, we were just talking about this. The, now is the time to see what are your children really learning in school. Um, and this isn't to put down, you know, schools or teachers or education. We're very thankful for that. Um, but you have to know what is going into your children's ears. This is the time. This is the time to reevaluate the priorities that you have had over your family, over God. Um, this is the time to reset, y'all. To realign. Realign, yes. Straighten up. Straighten narrow path. The narrow gate. You know, we all know the phrases. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> I guess... The, the the only tip I'll leave with uh, is about prayer. And, you know, we all kind of think, I mean, we, you know, nothing wrong with how you're praying, I'm sure. Uh, th there's this, the first century Orthodox Christians call it Hezekiah. And it's about uh, being still and silent. And that's where, you know, you read the Bible, there's, there's actually a, a number of scriptures that, we kind of know, but we just gloss over. We don't know what, what it means, you know, like be still and know God. Uh, the kingdom is within. It's if you're going crazy because the kids are around and you know, you're not busy anymore, you're not at work, which you were addicted to, which you probably worshipped. Um, you have to let you have to let the world go. Everybody, even the people you love in your mind and go into your prayer closet if you will <laughs> inside and if you need to do it in a closet that's nothing wrong with that you know i used to have a prayer closet yeah there's nothing wrong it's it's, <laughs> it's way easier if you can sit in a chair in a quiet room it's way easier and just be silent observe yourself you know don't push out thoughts just let them come in notice them uh don't judge them one way or the other just notice who you are and you know ask god to show you who you are and he will i promise you he will it may take a little time. Some people, it might happen immediately. Um, but yes, uh, and all the you know, all the apostles were doing that. You know, when they came and pulled Paul off the roof, he was he was sitting in his still silent prayer. He wasn't you know shouting out you know praise this, praise that, give me this, give me that. It was it was a still silent prayer. It's it's re it has to do with being present with God. It's walking with God. It's to and God is only in the present. You know, he made the past, he'll make the future, but he's only with you here and now. Mm -hmm. So remember that. And uh, yeah, give it a shot. Yeah. Let, let yourself go. Let your ego be quiet for a minute. Let reality catch up. And uh, give, all your, give all your baggage, you know, let Jesus carry that cross for you. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. And again, next week, uh, we'll be talking about the Immaculate Heart yes. of Mary. Love it. All right, Love that's it. all I got.
<laughs> All right, y'all. Well, we will be back next week with If We Do This Together, and hopefully you will get to see our faces. <laughs> yeah. But we're not promising that. Y'all have a great, great week. Bye. Bye.